political parties fielding six and more candidates in this election are eligible for party political broadcasts. For general election 2020, a total of seven parties are eligible. This is the second of two programs. Airtime is in proportion to the number of candidates fielded by the parties. The speakers representing their parties are Mr. Lee Hsien Lung from the People's Action Party, Dr. Tan Ching Bok from the Progress Singapore Party, Ms. Sylvia Lim from the Workers' Party, Dr. Paul Anath Tambaya from the Singapore Democratic Party, Mr. Lim Tien from People's Voice. Mr. Spencer Ng Chun Hon from the National Solidarity Party and Mr. Kenneth Jairatnam from the Reform Party. The party fielding the smallest number of candidates will appear first, the party fielding the largest number last. Delivering the party political broadcast for the Reform Party is Mr. Kenneth Jairatnam. His speech was recorded at the hotel where he is serving his stay home notice. Dear voters of Ang Mo Kio and Radin Mass, fighting COVID-19 and the worst economic crisis since independence is the biggest issue on all of our minds right now. We are in this together, but we will not all suffer the consequences of the PAP's mishandling equally. Reform Party's election slogan is, Build Back Better Fairer. After COVID, we will need to build back in a manner that is better for you and fairer for all Singaporeans, from the lowest income to entrepreneurs and small business owners hit by the recession and the middle classes squeezed from both ends. The PAP response is minor tweaks, schemes and measures, but the package does not differ in any substantial way to existing budgets. It will only defer the hardship to some point in the future. It does not deal with the challenges of slowdown and reversal of globalization. The Reform Party team, both known previous team candidates, Ken Jayaratnam, Andy Zhu, Noraini Yunus, Darren So, Kumar Apabu, and new candidate, young lawyer Charles Yeo, love Singapore and care deeply for you, the voters, which, which is why we have put forward our own detailed proposal for your recovery. It has been an honor to speak to you on the ground. You have shared with us your frustrations, struggles, and even anger, and we have listened. Your estates are mature and you have discovered recently that your flats are not a rising asset as promised, but a diminishing one that returns to zero. Meanwhile, the elite sit on inherited property wealth that is denied to you. No wonder you're angry. Your existing MPs are missing in action and Ang Mo Kio has been again gerrymandered. It is the largest GRC in Singapore with one less MP to represent it. No wonder you're angry. You have lost your jobs and the proposed schemes are difficult to access and not what you require. You still cannot access your CPF at age 55. No wonder you are angry. The manager of their previous town council was jailed for corruption, whereas our team leads the fight for transparency and accountability from the front. We are a safer set of hands. It is understandable that you are angry and worried, but now you can hold the incumbents to account for your vote in a positive and constructive manner, because you can be patriotic and vote in a way that visibly records your frustration and marks the PAP scorecard so they try harder in the future. When voting is not compulsory, every single vote for Reform Party matters if you are not to be completely silenced. Thank you. Vote Reform Party on Friday. Representing the National Solidarity Party is Mr. Spencer Ng Chun Hon. Good evening, Sambawang and Tampanese GRC residents and fellow Singaporeans. We are coming to the close of this short yet intense general election. Team NSP would like to thank all the warm welcome extended by the residents for the past nine days. It has been heartwarming to meet many familiar faces. All the support gave us the resolve to continue this fight for fairness and accountability in our parliament. But what are you voting for exactly in this general election? If you vote PAP candidates, they are not going to say no to policies that will cost you. Policies such as 9% GST and more expensive HDB flats. They are not going to fight for you as long as their party whip keeps them in line. They are just yes men. The PAP MPs will still be part-time MPs. Do they run your town councils themselves? No, they rely on external managing agents to run your town councils. So let us burst this myth that only PAP knows how to run town council. Are we losing valuable ministers? Ministers for the Environment and Water Resources, Mr. Masago, cannot even remove the GST tax on the water bond tax you have been paying for your whole life.
He declared in 2017 that the 30% increase in water tax after GE 2015 is to allow consumers to feel the full price of the water. Minister of Education Mr. Ong Yi Kang insisted on charging parking fees in schools on teachers who many have forked out their own money and valuable family time for their students' benefit. He called the need for parking fees is to uphold the value of self-discipline, but that self-discipline only shows the moral compass of the PAP. It is money above all. So I say, let us have better ministers for these two ministries in the next government. What do you get when NSP MPs are serving you? If you are okay with the performance of part-time PAP MPs who may hold multiple full-time jobs or directorships, I believe you will be overjoyed with full-time NSP MPs along with their expertise in managing your town councils. The, deals, the deal will get sweeter as we will represent you in Parliament to address policies that are fundamentally unsound or unfair to you. Plus, you get even more responsive PA grassroots advisors in your constituencies because you deserve better. For our Sambawang and Tampanese GRC residents, your vote holds tremendous power. You can decide to give the PAP another five years of blank checks or a government that is more consultative and responsible to you. Our country needs a broad and diverse parliament with members who care for its citizens and the future of our nation and hold themselves accountable to the citizens. Politics is not just for politicians, it is for every citizen. So make your vote count. Your vote is secret. Your vote determines not only your future, but also your children's future. For a better tomorrow, do the next right thing. Make NSP your vote. Thank you, stay safe, and good night. Here is Mr. Lim Tian from People's Voice. My fellow Singaporeans, we are on the eve of polling in an election which was called early by the PAP and inexcusably during the COVID-19 pandemic where we are still getting triple-digit cases every single day. We have the shortest campaign period in the democratic world, just nine days. Campaigning is now over, and the future of Singapore rests in your hands. Are we on the eve of another five years which benefit only the privileged few, and where the great many will see an ever-increasing drop in their standards of living, and in the evaporation of their dreams of themselves and their next generation? Your CPF being further stretched away from your grasp, depreciating HDB leasehold values, more increases in the price of our utilities, increase in public transport fares, 2% added to your GST, your medical records hacked, the incessant increase of immigration, and of course more debacles such as the recent foreign worker dormitories fiasco, which has left us with over 45,000 COVID-19 infections. No government is perfect. All governments, ministries and departments have mistakes and mishaps. But you know what is unique about this PAP government? Not a single apology, not a single resignation or step down, no accountability at all. Zero. They adopt their self-named no-blame culture and yet are paid the highest salaries in the world. It is the arrogance of these self-styled natural aristocrats that grades. And you know they have contempt for that ordinary man whom they would class as mediocre since he does not earn more than $500,000. When it comes to accountability and transparency, Singaporeans are left sorely wanting from the present PAP government. People's voice will bring accountability and transparency firmly into parliament unafraid to raise the tough questions demanding the PAP explain their policy ideas and plans. The PAP will have you believe that it is because of their system that Singapore runs so well. This is an untruth and this is arrogant. The PAP would have you believe that the good men and women who keep this country running, safe, secure and healthy are only doing their jobs that way because of the PAP. How insulting. The effort it takes to train, study and become a police officer, a teacher, a nurse, and NEA inspector are well-earned positions. Then the PAP would have you believe that if we wake on Saturday morning with opposition filling up the parliament seats, that all of a sudden these good men and women, professional men and women, will not be motivated to serve their fellow citizens. I and my party have more faith in my fellow Singaporeans than the PAP do. To choose PAP is to endure another five years equal to the last, with no accountability, no transparency, just more inequality, unemployment and immigration. I ask you to vote the people's voice on Friday to ensure that the next five years will be about putting people first so that together we can make Singapore our home again. It is time for us to regain our dignity, our country, our future. Speaking for the Singapore Democratic Party is Dr. Paul Anath Tambaya. Good evening, friends and fellow Singaporeans. In the minds of many experts, Holding an early general election in the midst of a pandemic is reckless and opportunistic. 
There are risks for voters and election officials, but more importantly, we cannot afford to let the ministerial committee leading the pandemic response be distracted by campaigning for the election. The PAP campaign seems to be focused on the old tactics of scaremongering and character assassination, without any new ideas to deal with a world which has changed dramatically. I used to wonder why the PAP was so afraid of Dr. Chi until I read Mr. Gochok Tong's biography, written by Mr. Pei Xing Hui. Page 221 of the book Tall Order contains the gem that Mr. Lee Kuan Yew liked to say that without the GRC, Teo Chi Hien on his own, standing in a single ward, might not win against somebody like Chi Sun Juan. That explains a lot. On the non-issue of the 10 million population, I would ask Singaporeans not to believe in the SDP or the PAP, but just look up the Straits Times and decide for themselves. This election is a critical election about the future of our children and grandchildren. The SDP has a simple message, four yeses and one no. Yes to suspending the GST until the end of 2021, yes to retrenchment insurance, yes to retirement income for low-income seniors. Our comprehensive policy papers covering housing, healthcare, population, education and climate change share the common goal of putting people first. How do we pay for this? We have calculated that using slightly more of the return on investment income, known as the NIRC, would more than cover the cost without touching the reserves. Singapore does not have oil and gas or diamonds. Our reserves are built from the sacrifices of our parents and grandparents who gave up their pensions and cheap healthcare and housing so that we would have funds for a rainy day. A senior citizen with $500 or a retrenched single mother with $1,500 are far more likely to spend the money locally on food or in shops in our neighbourhoods than a billionaire putting his millions in the Cayman Islands. It's much better to have cash in the hands of the people rather than corporations and hope that some of it trickles down to the rest of us. The SDP has a comprehensive town council plan which will ensure a smooth transition if we are elected with transparent accounting and no more $2 companies involved in the process. We will run the town councils ourselves without the cost of a managing agent. We have heard many of the issues that concern residents, including fire safety, delayed lift upgrading, noise pollution, lack of child and infant care, and others. The SDP promises that our MPs will be out there on the ground every day, working together for the good of the people to build a democratic society based on justice and equality. Majula Singapura. Thank you. Representing the Workers' Party is Ms. Sylvia Lim. Good evening, fellow Singaporeans. Imagine a Singapore that is far better than it is now. Singaporeans are proud of our country's tangible achievements. Even as an opposition party, we give credit to the PAP's founders for our physical infrastructure and efficient systems. But what about the intangible aspects? Can positive changes happen in Singapore so that we embrace openness to other views culture and creativity, transparency, kindness, fairness and happiness. Imagine a Singapore where the huge power imbalance that now exists with the government dominating and controlling the people is changed and power shifts back towards our citizens. Where diverse voices are listened to and really heard and government policies are not predecided and bulldozed through where civil society plays a significant role in discussing issues and suggesting ideas, just as it does in other countries. Envision a Singapore, where the government accepts opposition parties and others who speak up as Singaporeans who love our country, rather than nuisances to be fixed. Where artists, writers, actors and other creatives have the same respect and protections they enjoy in developed nations where there is press freedom far greater than our current ranking of 158th in the world. Yearn for Singapore, where organisations that spend taxpayers' money, such as the People's Association, are run equitably and not used to reinforce the PAP's control. Where places in schools are allocated fairly, rather than preferentially to those in committees run by PAP MPs and advisors. Where there is transparency regarding our CPF money and national reserves and openness about the salaries of those who invest and are paid the people's money, just as there is elsewhere. Dream of a Singapore, 
where Singaporeans enjoy the work-life balance we see in many developed countries, where the elderly work only if they choose to and not because they have to, where promoting fairness and the happiness of the people are the primary goals of the government rather than GDP growth. The PAP would have you believe that having such an open and fair society with press freedom will cripple a government's ability to act quickly and firmly. COVID-19 has shown that this is a false scare tactic. New Zealand, Taiwan, Denmark, Australia, Finland and South Korea have successfully tackled the coronavirus. Many may argue they have done so as well as, if not better than, Singapore. These places are economically successful and have competent governments. They are, at the same time, robust democracies where the changes of party in power at election time are considered normal. Every one of them is in the top 45 countries in the world when it comes to press freedom. Singapore is in the bottom 25. In addition, New Zealand, Denmark and Finland rank even higher than Singapore among countries with the least corruption. And all this is done with leaders who earn far lower salaries than ours do. These countries enjoy tangible success and yet still embrace intangible ideals. Can't we visualise a Singapore that has both too? We of the Workers' Party believe that such positive change in Singapore can happen if enough of us work for it. Our younger candidates have joined us because they have imagined a Singapore that can truly be even better. Imagine, envision, yearn for and dream of openness, transparency, kindness and fairness. Make your vote count. Vote for the Workers' Party. Thank you. Speaking for the Progress Singapore Party is Dr Tan Cheng Bok. My fellow Singaporeans, this general election is no ordinary GE. It is not only about the problems of today, but also about the solutions of the future. It is about protecting lives and livelihoods and rallying together as one nation to defeat the COVID-19 crisis. The PAP is telling you that to overcome this crisis, you must have complete mandate of all 93 seats in Parliament. Their idea of a Singapore together is domination, with no opposition MPs elected into Parliament. Does this kind of Parliament really represent Singapore together? Surely we can build a better vision of Singapore together. A Singapore that is truly of one heart and one mind. A truly united Singapore means having a parliament that reflects all views and not just the PAP view or the group think of a single political party, but on the collective wisdom of different thoughts, experiences and ideas. This is good and will help Singapore not to be blindsided when we make important decisions together. PSP can be that elected opposition for you. For Singapore to be truly together, we must have trust within the people and the government. That is why we push for transparency, independence and accountability in government. We will ask the questions no PAP MP will dare to ask in Parliament, to make them account for their actions, like how they appoint office holders, to make them work harder for you, to remind them that they are public servants and not political masters. This will be very important going forward because the PAP will spend billions of your reserve dollars earmarked for COVID recovery measures. This is the biggest government budget in history. So it is vital for Singapore to put independent eyes in Parliament to check that their, our money is spent wisely. These measures should only focus on jobs, jobs and jobs alone, with the disease still raging. The strategy must also aim to protect lives as well as livelihoods. Protecting lives means no reshaping national policies from a community healthcare angle to bring the virus spread under total control. Unless we reduce infection rates, foreign investors and tourists will not come to Singapore. That is why virus control must be our top, top priority. Sadly, 
This campaign, we have heard little from the PAP on the virus control plans. They took their eyes off the virus. As for protecting livelihoods, you have read our manifesto, which contains details of our proposals on CPF, housing, and what we must do to put local businesses and workers first. As borders take time to reopen, we will make sure the government spends our reserves to nurture strong local businesses, to grow local supply chains, and to encourage in the innovation. This is important because local businesses will be Singapore's growth catalyst in a post-COVID economy. I have now come to the end of my speech. Let me finish by thanking all our supporters. We never take your warm and strong support for granted. Thank you, young voters. I value your vote because Singapore is not just my country. It is yours too. You deserve a future that you can believe in when this crisis is over. So vote PSP and we will shape Singapore together. Also, thank you, my senior voters. I know your worries about COVID-19 disease and I promise that your health and safety will be my top priority in our COVID fight. We will be in Parliament to protect you. Last but not least, thank you all my other voters. You may have voted many times before, but this time you can vote for transparency, accountability and independence to check on how the next government spends our reserves and also to build a real Singapore together that includes non-PAP voices. If we stand together as Singaporeans, there is not a force in this world that can tear us apart. I believe this is or believe this with all of my heart and you must believe this too. Please stay safe on polling day. I wish you well for country, for people. Here is Mr Lee Hsien Lung from the People's Action Party. My fellow Singaporeans, good evening. This is an election unlike any other we have experienced in our history. COVID-19 continues to spread rapidly around the world. Our economy has been badly hit, though the full impact of the outbreak is still ahead of us. We need a strong and capable government, not only to take decisive action to prevent another major outbreak, but also to save businesses and jobs, which is at the top of everyone's minds. The PAP has concrete ideas and practical plans to do these things. But to put them into action, we need a strong mandate from Singaporeans. Jobs are our top priority. We are doing everything we can to save your jobs. The Job Support Scheme is helping businesses hold on to Singaporean workers. We are also assisting companies, especially SMEs, to keep afloat and manage cash flow with loans and rental waivers. So far, these and other measures have helped keep workers employed and staved off retrenchments. But it will take time to turn our economy around. The global recession will drag on in the coming months and we must brace ourselves for more job losses to come. We may not be able to save every job, but we will help every worker. Those who have been affected are already receiving support from the government. If your income has fallen significantly, there's a COVID-19 support grant. If you are self-employed or work in the gig economy, the Self-Employed Income Relief Scheme, or SERS, is available. For now, these and other schemes will tide our workers over and help you meet your daily needs as you get back on your feet. For workers who have lost your jobs, we will also do our best to help you find new ones. We are setting up satellite career centres in every town to organize job fairs and provide career matching services. The first eight 
of these career centres are already up and running. We are heavily funding training to help workers pick up new skills, which will help them move to other sectors. If you are willing to put in the effort, a PAP government will support you all the way. Be of good heart. We will also create new opportunities. Our aim is to create 100,000 new jobs and training positions in the coming year, three times our usual number. These will include 15,000 jobs in the public sector. They also include traineeships, some targeted at workers in their 40s and 50s. Others are for fresh graduates who are entering the difficult job market. It is not easy to create new jobs in a deep recession, but we are determined to succeed. Senior Minister Tarman Shanmugaratnam is leading the National Jobs Council. The council will bring together job-related efforts across our unions, business associations and government to multiply their impact. NTUC is working through company training committees in many firms to identify the skills that workers need, company by company, so that our efforts are tailored and effective. Our tripartite partnership has been the secret of our economic success since the early days of independence, and it will once again be key to our recovery. To create new and better jobs for our people, we must continue to attract new investments. This year, despite the pandemic and global recession, EDB has already secured $13 billion in new investments, exceeding its usual annual volume. These investments will create several thousand jobs in the next few years, taking us one important step closer to recovery. EDB could do this because investors have confidence in Singapore. They value Singaporean workers because we are skilled, hardworking, multilingual and disciplined. They know that our government is of high quality, an honest, competent civil service led by first-rate ministers. And they admire our social compact with the government and Singaporeans working hand-in-hand, hand, united as Team Singapore. Potential investors, and others too, are watching our election closely. They will want to know if Singapore still has what it takes to sustain our edge, especially in a crisis. In this crisis election, we must show the world that Singaporeans understand what our survival depends on. Even as we tackle the immediate challenges, we must look to our future. One day, the pandemic and the recession will be over. When that day comes, we must be ready to resume our journey onward and upward. Hence, we will press on with restructuring and upgrading our economy and reskilling and upskilling our workforce. This will help our people adapt to the uncertainties ahead, seize new opportunities and improve their lives. Beyond economic prosperity, Singaporeans have broader ambitions for our nation. We aspire to be a harmonious society with, with full opportunities for all, where the human spirit can flourish. A more inclusive society where we support those who need help and every Singaporean feels they have a stake in the future. We want to be a community where Singaporeans believe that their children will have better lives than they did. The PAP has plans to improve our education system, to bring out the best in every child, to make healthcare more accessible and affordable especially for the elderly, to build 
new HDB towns and parks, new MRT lines, and a new downtown on the waterfront. And to prepare for climate change, an existential threat to our little island. In time to come, all these should be part of a better Singapore that we pass on to the next generation. But to get there, we first have to make it through the immediate crisis. We do not know how the next few years will unfold, but we give ourselves the best chance of success if we rally together, choose a competent, experienced and committed team to lead the country and then give it our full support. We need leaders who care for Singaporeans, with experience and ideas to keep Singapore going, come what may. We also need Singaporeans who care for our country and will work together with their leaders to secure it in the crisis and beyond. The PAP and Singapore are no strangers to adversity. The PAP fought together with the pioneer generation through independence and separation. We worked with the Merdeka generation to take Singapore from third world to first. Now, we are facing the crisis of a generation. Whether we rise to this challenge will determine Singapore's future. The PAP will do our best, but we cannot do it alone. In a critical election like this one, every vote counts. We need the support of every Singaporean, not just to return the PAP to government, but also to give it a strong mandate to empower it, to act decisively on your behalf and steer the country towards better days ahead. As you go to the polls tomorrow, I ask you once again to put your trust in the PAP. Vote PAP to secure our lives, our jobs, our future. Thank you and good night.